Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. In the previous video, 18a, send parameters to TaskFlow, we worked with um, sending a value from a form into a task flow and into a form on the other side. And here is an example of that. We press go. The first thing that happens is that the parameter gets set in this, and then we go to the call it called form, the target form. This is the called form, and this is the value. And if we go back, we can see that it was actually written here also. So tonight we're going to work with um, another aspect of this. We're going to, um, instead of having a, another form that we go to, we're going to have a region on the main form, the calling form, right here, so that both data will be on the same form, and we don't have as much moving around. In order to do that, we have to make some changes. Well, the first change that we're going to make is, is we're going to take the go off of here, because we don't know we no longer need that. We will have the go to actually set the param, because that value is set here. And in the cost task flow, we don't need the return, so we can get rid of that. And in the AVF config, well, we no longer need the task flow here because it's going to be on the calling form. So we get rid of that. Save it. And uh, let's open up the calling form. We still have the parameter for the calling form set here. You can see and we have any name will do as the page flow scope parameter. And that value is here. Any name will do. Now, let's go to the calling form. And we're going to do one thing basically to show you something you cannot do. If I try to drag this task flow onto the form, it's not going to let me set it as a region. And why is that? Well, because the called form is a JSPX form. If it's in a region, it has to be a JSFF form. So we go over to the task flow, over to the diagram, and we click on the form, and we say convert to task flow with page fragments. I'm not going to keep the page because it just sits there and I don't really need it. But it might be a good reason to you might be it might be useful to keep the page or to set a backup before you do this okay now we have the called form it is now a jsff form and we can go back to the calling form and the the main form, I should say, and then we can drag this on. And now it lets us put it on as a region. There is going to be another re dynamic region video coming up. So if you'd like to watch that, uh, please keep an eye out for it on my channel. But for now, we're just going to put this in as a region. Now, as you know, we have the input parameter value. And I don't have that param copied into my clipboard, and I'm a lousy typer. So I'm going to set that in a minute, and it's useful to know how to do that. So we go over here and we grab this. Now this is also set in the button, but it's going to here first. And I can click on to here. I go to bindings. And then I it's automatically selected because I clicked on it before. And then I go here, and you can see now that I'm at the same form. Now I'll just copy this in. Okay, now one other thing that we need to do is we need to set this task flow so that it refreshes if needed. And it's right over here on the property inspector. So you click here, it'll be highlighted in the structure window, in which case you can then come over to here and select if needed. And this is very easy to forget. How do I know? Because I've forgotten. Okay, let's save this. Okay, I think we're ready to run this. So I'm going to come over to my calling form, press run, and as usual with JDeveloper, wait. 
Okay, we have the form now. We have the calling form on top, the called form as a region inside. We press go, it writes to this, and it writes to that. Okay, let's do a quick overview. Basically, before what we had was we had the calling form and the task flow being sent over with the view activity or view control flow case in between. We took that out and we put the value as a region by dragging the called task flow onto the form. And then we set the binding. Well, also we set refresh to if needed. And we also set the binding to the value that was set in the form with input parameter one automatically populating. One thing to note is, is that when you do a dynamic region, you do not have this automatically populate. You have to press a little plus sign that actually shows up and then you enter that data yourself. Um, and you should watch that video because it's slightly different from doing it this way. And basically, because the parameter was already set in the task flow, and this value was set on the form over here in the, per, uh, in the property inspector, it ran just fine. I didn't really have to do too much to it. Although, as I said, absolutely necessary. Setting the if needed is quite necessary. And that's something easy to forget because it's not very up front and center. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you. I hope you will watch my next video, which will be on um, doing the same with a dynamic region. Have a good evening.